Welcome to today's video. In this one, we're going to look at silver and inflation. We've seen a lot of inflation over the last century. Why is that? We'll give you the answer. It's the Federal Reserve, and we'll look more into inflation later on in this video. But for now, we're going to start with silver. This is the yearly average chart going back to the late 1700, 1792 to be exact. Now, what's the difference between the trading within uh, this period of time compared to what we see today? And the answer is quite obvious, and that is the price pretty much is exactly the same. And that was the price of $1.29 an ounce for silver. It had a small micro increase here, and even a smaller, smaller micro increase in towards here. But then that all changed in the late 1800s, and this is where the change begun. Because from this point on, that's when silver did not stay at the same price. It would work within a volatile moving area. This high in here is from the year 1865. The yearly average that year was silver at $2.94. There was a lot of inflation that year. We'll show later on, the, not the reason why, but the charts that were indicating the high level of inflation. And from that point on, silver was in a bearish trend. And Well, there's a 650-year chart which shows the uh, inflation-adjusted price for silver going much, much lower. And even at this point, there was really no inflation. So this really is the inflation-adjusted chart at least up towards here, pretty much. And then, of course, the Federal Reserve comes into play, and, well, we've had a lot, a lot of inflation. In fact, if you look at the price chart for almost anything, a, good, a product, a service, over the last 70, 80, 90 years, you will notice that it is a bullish action for the price going higher whether it's silver, whether it's gold, the price of a house, the price of a car, the price of the lollipops that you get in postage stamps, and tuition, and you name it. It's all going higher. And people ask, well, when's hyperinflation going to start? The answer is it started back in 1913. It's a past tense situation. So looking at this chart, we were in the downtrend, and the downtrend was taken out. Therefore, the trend line that we can follow now is uh, something in the area like this, and we are in a bullish, bullish trend since the 1932 bottom of 25 cents. Therefore, this massive move that had its average in 1980 at 21.79, it had an intraday or an intra-month high or intra-year high at $50 an ounce, and then it fell down to $3.79. And that is a price correction. That's a major, major move. So when people talk about silver going to 100, 2, 4, 500, it's really not that much of a surprise when you are looking at this chart. This is logarithmic based on percentage moves. And going from a quarter to $20 an ounce, that is quite massive to say the least. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put some moving averages on this chart and some Fibonacci. And we'll do that now. This is the chart. And the moving averages that you see on here, the green line represents the 25-year moving average. The blue line, that is the 50-year moving average. And the reddish-looking line is the 100-year moving average. They are all rising, all, of course, showing bullish signs. These orange lines represent Fibonacci upside from the high that we had back in 1865 and within the low of 25 cents. So the first Fibonacci level, well, it didn't take too long to uh, get above it. Second one burst through it. Then it burst through it again. 
And it finally managed to find its resistance up at this Fibonacci level here. Therefore, it wouldn't be a surprise if breaking this resistance, if we happen to go through three or four of these Fibonacci levels, which could take us to what would be a hundred dollars per ounce. And to be exact, it would be, I got a screen here. I got it written down at $78.35 as the 2903. And that's actually breaking three, not breaking four. So a major, major upside would not be a surprise. And getting up to 78.35, that would be its average. For its average in 1980 was a little over 20, yet it managed to get up to $50 per ounce. For the next little bit of Fibonacci, what we're going to do is we are going to take a look at these highs and these lows. So the high is $21.79 and the low is $0.25. Cents. So we're going to have to use some exponential Fibonacci for this one. So 25 was the low and 21.79 was the high. So its exponential Fibonacci was four dollars and a buck forty, and the four dollar level was support. So therefore, its massive move lower was a normal standard price correction that it has. Now, if we take the Fibonacci upside from this level here to this level down below here. Where do you think that takes us to the 161.8% level? The answer to that is $32.91. A very, very interesting number, especially if you've been watching some of my previous silver videos where I have talked about its current major Fibonacci upside range, the range from 4 to 8 which also has 32 as its next price objective. So I find that very, very interesting to say the least. Now we're going to switch this within inflation and deflation. This comes from Wikipedia user la 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 666. And I'm going to use a few of the charts that are represented within this page. I'm not too sure of where the data comes from, but we can see over the 1600s, the 1700s, and the 1800s that we really did not have much as far as inflation is concerned. At least if we had inflation, we had deflation to go with it. And if you look at a stock market chart, this is what's very normal, having your ups and then having your downs. That is very, very normal because you have this big inflationary period and a little bit of deflation. Nothing goes straight up or straight down. However, since the uh, Federal Reserve has came into play, the inflation has been going straight up for well more than a half of a century. No deflation whatsoever. Ever. And what I've learned from MACD, which is a technical indicator, is when you go back and forth like this and you finally have a big move forward, you slowly go lower. Most likely what happens is you will bottom close to the positive area before you have another length of inflation because this is yearly inflation, what the inflation is per year. And when you have roughly 4 or 5% inflation, and these are government numbers, every single year, that becomes hyperinflation. The Federal Reserve took over roughly around 1913, and it didn't take them long to have a major inflationary move. The previous big inflationary move was in 1865. That was the year I was talking about seeing silver go to $2.94 per ounce. So the reason why it went that high was there was because there was a lot of inflation. But it was followed up with some deflation, which brought the prices down lower. So therefore, if you look at the chart for how inflation and def or how the inflationary trade would have worked within the 1600s, 1700s, and 1800s, 
you would have noticed it a choppy up and down motion. And then, ever since the Federal Reserve came into play, a huge rise higher, the uh, area of deflation that we had during the Great Depression, it would have created a nice little low, but since then it's been skyrocketing ever since. So my view is hyperinflation started back in 1913. Changing the scaling on the U.S. inflation rate going back about uh, 100 years or so, it uh, shows us that when the Fed came into play roughly somewhere around here, that it had a massive, massive surge of inflation, 20% year over year. And it quickly changed to a deflationary cycle. Then again, during the Great Depression, and that was the end of the, the deflation. And since then, it has been majorly, majorly inflated. For before the Federal Reserve was in, inflation really wasn't an issue. And now it is. But the cost that we have is only relevant to how much you have, how much you make. And when we take a look at the chart for the median personal income by education, for the most part, it is extremely flat. Going back to 1991, upwards into 2005. So if your prices are going higher and your income levels stay flat, that's going to create problems. But you'll hear people within the media and the government stating we need consumers to spend. And it gets very difficult when you do not have an increase in wages to counteract the inflation along with debt pressures. As I've repeated on this channel many times, that debt is guaranteed based on the monopoly within the monetary system and by increasing even more debt by lending more, well, that causes a heck of a lot of problems. So I'd like to thank you for watching this video and have yourself a great day.